Hello everyone, it's Calvin here, and I'm extremely excited to be kicking off a new series on the PanOS Python SDK for Palo Alto Network products. So if network security and Python programming gets you fired up, well, you're in the right spot. This series will take you on a ride from the basics of the PanOS Python SDK all the way up to more complex deployments. Now, this is the first video in our series, and throughout the series of episodes, we'll start with the basics and gradually move on to more complex application. By the end, my hope is that you'll have the skills to confidently utilize Python to manage your Palo Alto Networks environment. So whether you're looking to enhance your skills or you're seeking some practical solutions for your own environment, this series is going to have you covered. So let's go ahead and get started on this journey. Now, we should probably start off by getting to know Palo Alto Networks and their products just a little bit before we start talking about how to automate them. Palo Alto Networks is a global cybersecurity leader. Their mission is to protect our digital way of life, which they can achieve through their innovative security platform. This platform includes the PanOS Firewall. Now, as a next-gen firewall, PanOS goes beyond the traditional network protection. It provides comprehensive visibility into your network traffic, your applications, and applies a series of policies to identify and block potential threats. But managing firewalls at scale can be complex, and that's where Panorama comes in. See, Panorama is a centralized management system for the PanOS firewalls. From a single location, you can control policy settings, monitor network status, and respond to threats across your entire network. Now, interacting with these programs programmatically, we have a REST API and we have an XML API that's also exposed over HTTP. But in our case for today, we're going to be using the Python SDK instead. This SDK, or Software Development Kit, it allows us to write Python scripts to automate complex and repetitive tasks, such as configuring security policies or setting up some new network interfaces or something along the lines of creating some kind of new security config. It's a powerful tool and it's gonna significantly enhance our productivity. Now again, in this series, we're gonna dive deep into this SDK to cover all the different use cases and make sure that we can deploy our security environment effectively. By the end of this series, you're gonna have a stronger understanding of how to use Python to interact with these products, to make your network more secure and more efficient. All right, folks, now it's time to roll up our sleeves and set up our own Python environment. Our companion for this part of the journey is going to be Poetry. Now, this is a tool that's going to help us take care of package installation and isolation for us. Now, if Poetry doesn't already exist on your computer, and it doesn't by default, you can download it and install it from the official Poetry website. Now, let's create a new directory for our project and navigate into it from our shell. Once we're inside our new directory, we're going to initialize our poetry environment. The poetry init command is going to set up a new poetry project and create a pyproject.toml file, which is where all of our project's dependencies are going to be listed. Now let's start off by adding our dependencies. I've only got two listed here today, but I'm imagining as the video series grows, we're going to get a little bit larger. But for now, let's go ahead and add panOS Python. This is the SDK that's going to allow us to interact with these Palo Alto Networks products using Python. Now next, we're going to add a, an optional dependency, but one that I'm going to be using extensively, and that is called IPython. Now, IPython is an interactive Python shell that's great for testing, debugging, or giving live demos. <laughs> so you can see why I picked it up. It also makes things uh, really colorful. It adds context. It adds history. There's a lot of really great things. Autocomplete. Uh, there's, there's a lot of great features with IPython, but for the most part, again, it's not required to execute your script. It just makes giving these demos and giving hands-on lessons a little bit more oomph behind them. Oh, there we go. We got our Python environment all set up with the necessary packages. 
Now let's dive a little bit into object oriented programming. You see, it's critical that we have a firm understanding of object oriented programming when we're using this SDK. Now don't worry, we're going to spend the next video entirely upon object oriented programming and how it maps to this SDK. But let's just go ahead and give you a sneak peek. In the object oriented programming approach, we're going to design and construct our software using objects, which are instances of predefined classes. You can think of a class like a blueprint for an object. With the SDK, each class is going to correspond to a component within the Palo Alto Networks ecosystem. These classes and the objects that we derive them from are key tools in our programming toolkit, and we're going to be using them quite a bit. Each object that we create from these classes has its own attributes and methods. The attributes are the characteristics or the properties of the object, while the methods are more like the actions that the object can perform. Let's move on to a little hands-on session where we can demonstrate these concepts in action. We'll start by connecting to a PanOS firewall. First, we're gonna import the necessary class from our PanOS module. Then we're gonna create an instance of the PanOS firewall class. This instance is an object that represents our firewall. Now to create the object, we're gonna pass in the firewall's hostname, username, and password. These are the attributes of the firewall object. Now let's go ahead and add some configuration to this firewall. Let's go ahead and create an instance of the address object class. This object is going to represent an address object within our firewall configuration. What we need to do after we've created the address object is we're going to attach it to the firewall using the add method, and then we're going to call the create method. This method is a function that belongs to the address object class and can be performed by any instance of this class. So if we create another address object, we create another 421 address objects, they're all going to have this same create method. As we're seeing, one of the key principles of object-oriented programming is this hierarchy of objects or the parent-child relationships between them. See, in object-oriented programming, objects can contain other objects. This is commonly referred to as composition. For instance, a panorama object can contain multiple device group objects, and a device group object can contain multiple address objects. When working with this SDK, this hierarchical structure maps directly to the way configurations are organized within PanOS. For example, when you look at the web interface on Panorama or PanOS firewalls, you see that the configurations are already organized in a hierarchical manner. At the top level, you have the management console. Under that, you have various device groups, and within each device group, you'll have numerous configuration objects like address objects and security policies and NAT policies and all these different types of things. This structure allows for efficient management of control of configurations. By using the Python SDK, we can mirror this structure in our Python code, making our task for configuration and management much simpler. All right, now that wraps up this first introduction video to the series on deploying and provisioning a security network with the PanOS Python SDK. Today, we've covered the basics of Palo Alto Networks, the PanOS and Panorama appliances, and we've set up some of our Python virtual environment using Poetry. Uh, we've also explored some of the principles of object-oriented programming and how they apply to the SDK. Plus, we walked through some hands-on examples of connecting to a firewall and creating an address object. On our next video, we're going to dive much deeper into the SDK and object-oriented programming as a whole. We'll explore some complex operations such as configuring security policies or setting up some new network interfaces. So make sure to tune in for that. Also, hey, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, like it, share it with your grandma. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and don't miss out on our next videos. 
Also, if you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to drop them down in the comment section below.